Hi guys, it's Rylan and I'm so excited to be hosting my very first virtual coffee morning for World IBD Day in support of Crohn's and Colitis UK. Now, some of you cronies out there, that's what we're going to call you, uh, you may know that my mum Linda, she suffers with Crohn's disease and she has done all my life. Um, and we've been quite vocal about it as well. Uh, we've spoken about it on Gogglebox. We speak about it on the radio every week, even though I do try and shut her up sometimes. She just keeps on going. Uh, but, you know, I want to raise as much awareness as I physically can for Crohn's and Colitis UK, purely because of the sheer fact of I know how much the charities help my mum out. Um, and all the amazing doctors and nurses as well. And in these times at the moment, a virtual coffee morning seems quite the treat to do. And I'm not alone either, because today I am joined by Isabel. Isabel, are you there? Yeah, hey, I'm here. Hello. Hi, how are you? I've got my coffee cup. <laughs> Isabel, do you want to introduce yourself to everyone and tell everyone what you do? Yeah, nice to meet you, Rylan. I'm Isabel. I'm a nurse consultant in gastroenterology. So I, I work at the Royal Free Hospital. I always say I look after the bowels of North London. Um, but part of that means that I have lots of contact with people living with Crohn's and colitis, and I have a team of nurses who are nurse specialists that work with our patients. And then I also just do a day a week working for Crohn's and Colitis UK, running their nursing programmes. I think the thing is as well, for a lot of people that don't really know what Crohn's and colitis is, and believe me, there are a lot of people out there, it is, I suppose you could say, an invisible illness. It's, it's not an illness that you know, to the eye that you would go, oh, there's, there's, they've got something, there's something's going on there. It, it, it has always been an invisible illness. And I've always seen that with my mum. But I know other people that have got Crohn's and colitis, that every single person is different. Like these diseases affect people in such different ways, don't they? Yeah. yeah and I think the, the big thing for me is that it's lifelong. You know, you know that from your mum. They live with it all their lives, sometimes with very few problems and other times with problems that really have a, are massively overwhelming for them and their families. I think also it's funny, though, when you start talking about it, suddenly somebody knows someone, you know, you tell someone, oh, they go, oh, I've got a cousin or my next door neighbour. or And part of it is because people don't want to talk about it, you know, they don't want to. People don't talk about bums and bowels and stuff like yeah. that very much. But it's amazing once you start, if you just get out there and start talking about it, how many people do know somebody. Often it can take an awful long time for people to actually get that diagnosis. Sometimes by the time they get it, they're quite sick. You know, whereas if you catch it early, just like any illness, you can get on and treat it quickly if people don't get so sick. But the charity has done loads of work with GPs trying to... Um, really give them the information so that when they're making that decision, people turn up for the first time in, at their GP and say that there's something wrong with my bowel, it's not behaving right. There's really easy tests now that they can do to decide, is this an irritable bowel syndrome or is this Crohn's or colitis? And it's about getting that information out there. And I think it's getting a bit better. I think it is. Yeah, and I think what we're seeing as well is, uh, me personally, because it's obviously always in the back of my mind, Crohn, it's something that I always listen out for and if someone mentions it you feel yeah. like oh 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 and I do find a lot a lot more younger people now yeah. are talking about it and they're they're being very open about it because I think there always was especially when I was growing up there was always like a taboo around it because like you say people don't like to talk about things like that I'd know when my mum was ill when she was really ill um, and she was in and out of hospital. She had half of her bowel removed. And then a few years later, she had half of her half removed. Um, so she was literally left with the, the smallest bit of bowel. And then I think it was three years ago now, uh, she was complaining that her leg hurt. Like just randomly, she's like, I've got a dull ache in my leg. And it turns out that that turned into sepsis. And it was just by chance, went up to the hospital, took a blood test, double checked and lo and behold it was that that then led to my mum having to have the bag and it's something that she never ever wanted to have she always said no i don't want the bag don't want it don't want it but what we kept saying to her is all that pain that you get where you're in so much pain yes i know you don't want a bag you don't want a glossy bag but that pain will be gone because it's not you having to 
like your body having to work at that. And lo and behold, she did have that done. And I know it's always embarrassed my mum, but I think now my mum's 67 now. And, you know, we've, we've got to that point where we sort of take the mick out of her. We call it a handbag. Um, <laughs> and uh, the fact that we, we always say, oh, it's a designer bag. And uh, I always wonder up and that we're going to get a different design and stuff like that. <laughs> but it's one of those things that you think the more people talk about it, the more it's yeah. normal. It's like having a big old set of veneers, you know, they're more common yeah. now. <laughs> I mean, I spend all day talking to the lovely people of North London, asking them about their bowels. And still, even in front of a, of a nurse who talks about it all the time, people don't want to say. They'll yeah. say, how, how have you been this week? And they'll go, oh, I don't want to. Or they'll say, I'm sorry I have to talk like this to you. And I just, and for me, I say, well, I hear this all day, every day. It's my mm-hmm. job. I don't mind. But people are so embarrassed about talking about it. And I think you, you really hit the nail on the head there about with the embarrassment of it all. That's why a lot of people get misdiagnosed as well. And that's why a lot of people get to a situation where they get to a point of, like you say, early diagnosis, early treatment. You know, it is a lifelong condition, but it is incredibly manageable. But the longer it's left, the longer you're embarrassed, the longer that you think, oh, I don't want to have to go to this test. It needs to be done. And the sooner that that's done, the sooner that it's diagnosed, the sooner the NHS can help you out, the sooner your GP can refer you to the right people, to a specialist, to a gastroenterologist, whatever, and you can get it done. But I think it's just breaking that stigma of let's not worry about it. Don't be embarrassed because believe me, they've seen it all before and they've seen a lot worse. Exactly. The other thing to say is that probably in your mum's time that the treatments that we've got now are so much better. You know, when I started 20 years ago, really, we had so few medicines that we could use for people. Whereas mm. now the, the medical treatments are just transformed and people, you know, it means that people have just do much better. So that's why it's also important that you get to the right place and that you ask the questions, you know, that people feel able I bet you do when you go with her, don't you? Ask and challenge and find out what the options are. And the charity's got tons of information uh, for people to look at. And you know, just plan before you go, ask what you want to ask, you know? What type of support is sort of out there, readily available for anyone, one, who thinks they might have symptoms and two, has already been diagnosed with Crohn's disease? You know, I think that's where the charity is really important. You know, if you just go and have a look, whether it's their social media pages or their YouTube pages or the information stuff that they've got, there's tons there for people to be able to really connect to other people if they want to, or if they don't want to, just to find out more in information. And it's also why nurses like my team of nurses are so important. So every hospital now has a nurse specialist that works with people with kinds of crisis, and that's exactly their job. It's kind of being the link between the doctors and, and the patients, but also being available, knowing them, talking with them, you know, providing information and support as well as the medical staff. So that's why we've worked so hard to get nurses across the UK, because it makes such a big difference. Absolutely. And like we say, all this information is on the website. And if anyone is worried about, oh, I'm watching this and... Do you know what? That's weird. I, I, I sometimes feel that or, yeah. or so-and-so or my husband, my wife, my sister, my brother. For goodness sake, like, don't be embarrassed about talking about things like this. If you're worried about someone, yourself or anything like that, just go and get it checked out. Because the worst thing that can happen is, yeah, all right, you've got it. But at least, you know, you've caught it, you're treating it and you're, you can live with it and live a long, happy life. The same, it's almost even more true now. You know, there's no question that people are frightened at the minute to go to hospitals or they're worried about bothering the doctors or bothering the NHS. But there's a real strong message that the NHS is still open for people when they're sick. And there's two really important messages. One is that all the data, all the information we've got from countries where they've looked at people, where they've had it before us, is that probably there's not a bigger risk for people with Crohn's and colitis, that generally, just like all of us, if we get it, we'll be ill, but we'll come out the other side. Um, the other thing, though, is that there are risk factors. And um, there's main, the main important things is that keep your bowel well. So if you're having a flare, your bowel's bad, that probably means if you get it, you have more risk. 
there's loads of advice on the website there's like a decision tree where you can just run through your own individual notes and find out whether you should just be self-distancing like the whole the rest of the world or whether you have to take extra precaution i love hosting this little virtual coffee morning with you it's a real <laughs> pleasure but you know what everyone's got to get out there because you know what these charities don't work without the amazing fundraising from people up and down the country that suffer with Crohn's and colitis that don't suffer with Crohn's and colitis. So just make, I know you are anyway, but to anyone that's watching, get yourself out there, do a little coffee morning, make sure it's virtual for now. Maybe do, I don't know, a little run on the treadmill and get your mates to sponsor you to like run, do you know what, in my case, 10 metres. But I don't know, is how, how many metres can you do on a treadmill? <laughs> I can't do any. You could be joking. On that note, I sponsor you 100 quid a mile. <laughs> oh, I'll hold you to it. Oh, I think I might be cheap, you know. <laughs> I've been called worse before. Put it that way. Um, you do such an amazing job, honestly. And on behalf of people like my mum that you look after and, and, and always work with and always a pleasure to speak to you. Thank you so much. For pleasure. Pleasure. But also... Thanks for continuing to raise the awareness. You know, so all the things you said are so important, and the charity they're invaluable for us um, as doctors and nurses. We really rely on them. So you know, it's great mutual respect. It was such a pleasure to speak to you. You stay safe and stay well, and hopefully we'll catch up again soon. You too. Cheers, Ryland. Lots of love. Bye. Bye.